Once again, Jesus tells a strange story that caused many theologians to kind of contemplate various explanations. Now, in my study for this, I learned just like, what? Different reading, different things. Now, this is what, something I've learned. Uh, it's better to be reminded about something as I prepare this. When you read the Bible, let your first understanding be absolutely obvious. What is it obviously saying? And to whom is Jesus speaking? Because that the context of it and the obvious of it really replaces the mysticism of it. I read some stuff in commentaries like going, you've got to be kidding me. How did you get that mystical explanation from this? So take the Bible seriously and literal at the first reading. When it says there's a mystical meaning, then it'll be affirmed by other passages of Scripture. So this is a strange story that um, has some practical surface level meaning, but also some deeper meaning that I think you'll see comes forth in other scriptures. So let's read the story. This is found in Luke 13 again, uh, verses 6 through 9. And he told this parable. A man had a fig tree that was planted in his vineyard. He came looking for fruit on it and found none. He told the, the vineyard worker, Listen, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this tree, fig tree and I haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should I waste the soil? But he replied to him, this is the worker. Sir, leave it for this year, and I will dig around it and fertilize it, and perhaps it will produce fruit next year. But if not, you can cut it. You can cut it down. Okay. You see, Jesus had an encounter right before this told the story that may, might shed some light on what he was saying and why he was saying it. This encounter was about who was better than whom. Who was better than whom. And we're going to talk a lot about entitlement in this series, and you're going to hear more. At the same time, some people came and reported to him about the, the, the Galeans who were, whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifice. And he responded to them, do you think these Galeans were more sinful than the other Galeans because they suffered these things? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as well. Are those 18 that the tower in Shalom fell on them and killed? Do you think they were more sinful than other people who live in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all perish as well. Now, what this is doing is Jesus is cutting to the quick of comparing and critiquing. You see, we want to compare ourselves to other people. Like, you know, compared to uh, other people, I'm pretty dead gum good. You know, I'm not living in a tent on the side of the road in Austin. I'm not on crack cocaine. Heck, I'm better than a lot of people I know. In fact, I like hanging around some people because it makes me feel better about myself. Well, that's not helpful. And then critiquing and, 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 and picking on people and, and, and being judgmental. It's not healthy. And what Jesus was addressing here, that he makes a blanket statement about repentance that really seems harsh, but then he tells this parable. This parable was a response to people thinking they were better than someone else. Oh, you see, the fig trees in that day were common and valued. In fact, I've had a few fig trees on properties of I owned, and my grandmother had a fig tree that we, man, we picked figs all summer long off that thing. Made fig preserves and fig cakes and pies and puddings and fig everywhere. Go figure. Sorry. But it was all about gathering the fruit. Now, because the soil was rocky in, in Israel, fig trees would be placed in a choice spot in the garden. Now, hold on to that because when we talk about the parable of the mustard seed, you're going to hear about this same kind of nomenclature. It's placed in a choice spot. Fig trees require more water and more fertilizer than other trees. It requires tending. Now get this. It takes three years for a fig tree to even begin to bear fruit. You plant it and three years it lays dormant and then it starts producing fruit. And the bigger they are, the longer they are, that they produce more fruit. Now a fig tree without fruit is useless. They're they're useless. Uh, the, the leaves are gummy and sticky, and they're just, they're just useless. Now, the owner of the vineyard, he was ready for figs, and he decided the tree had to go because the tree wasn't doing what the tree was supposed to do. Now, in the mystical side of this, the vineyard owner is God, and the vineyard worker is Jesus. And he was making these illustrations very clear, and there's scripture that support this. Now, why did Jesus use this word picture? He was saying, God... Was he saying God would just give up on us and cut us down if we're not fruitful? Was that what he was saying? You see, God wants our lives to bear fruit. 
he's decided that our lives will bear fruit. Well, what kind of fruit does God want us to bear? Now, when I say that, automatically those of you who grew up in Southern Baptist churches think fruit is winning people to Jesus. That is not fruit. That's not the fruit the Bible talks about. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we're not bearing this kind of fruit, there's something wrong. Now, we're supposed to have all nine. If you think about an orange, it's in segments. The fruit of the Spirit is a singular thing with the segments of these nine segments that are manifest in the fruit. That we're to produce all of these things for the glory of God. This parable shows us that God is willing to give us opportunity to bear fruit. That's why he sent Jesus to die for us. As the gardener, Jesus redeems us and makes sure that we're growing in him. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. That we're not saved on our own accord. It's by grace through faith we're saved, not our works, lest many a man should boast. For God has saved us for the good works he has for us to, yet to come. Paul said that to the church in, uh, in Ephesus. So we know that Jesus has done this. That, listen to this. God is the God of the second chance, the third chance, the fourth chance, the fifth chance. So these guys who were listening to this going, okay, wait a second. We think we're better than them because we didn't experience karma, which the Jewish people really believed in karma. They didn't call it karma because that's a Hindu concept. But the ancient people really believed that God would punish you because of your own sins. And if you did bad, you were going to get bad. They believed that because so then they tried to keep up external appearances of goodness. And it just wasn't working. It just wasn't working. So in all of this, they were caught up in this false thing. Now, the fig tree grows figs. As Christ followers, we bear fruit naturally. Jesus waters us. He feeds us. He cares for us. The only time God will cut us down is after every opportunity for us to bear fruit is lost and your life is over. Oh. So as long as I live then, have the opportunity to bear fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Now get this, I'll say this, and I want you to hold on to it. Don't compare yourself to other people like they were doing earlier. Don't critique other people. Check your own dadgum fruit. That's a good word from Jesus. Don't be a barren fig tree. Let God do in your life what you cannot do. Produce the fruit of the Spirit as you submit to his will and his leadership and his, get this, lordship. And I'm going to close with this. Jesus taught this parable to remind us how much we really need him. Have a great discussion. I hope this has helped.